To make sandpaper, you need a lot of grit. There are thousands of tiny abrasive grains on a single piece. The whole idea is to create friction. By rubbing it against wood or metal, you can remove defects and make things look good on the surface. It's ironic that something so abrasive can make things look so smooth and polished. Sandpaper often isn't made from paper at all, but fabric like polycotton. They unwind the cloth into a machine with a printing press. Rollers with rubber printers magnetically attached to them stamp product information onto the cloth. The cloth then travels underneath the printing press where more rollers apply a heat setting adhesive to the unprinted side. They measure the density of the coating using a computerized system. This confirms that it's been applied correctly. Then the cloth is pulled underground to the electrostatic pit. Here the environment is kept hot and humid, perfect for applying abrasive grains to the cloth electrostatically. They pour the grains onto a conveyor belt in the pit. The conveyor moves the grains under the rolling cloth and between electrodes and ground plates. They create an electrical field that triggers a mini sandstorm. Once airborne, the abrasive grains stick to the adhesive coated cloth and become embedded in it. This electrostatic system allows them to evenly distribute the grains across the cloth. The grain coated cloth now rolls out of the pit and back up to the next level. A technician cuts a swatch of the sandpaper, then peels away layers and makes three different cutouts. One of the cloth alone, another of the cloth with the adhesive coating, and a third, the grain and adhesive coated cloth. He weighs each cutout to confirm that the sandpaper has been formulated precisely to specification. He also examines the gritty surface under a microscope to confirm the grains are standing up evenly. This production run gets the go-ahead, so they move the sandpaper through a 91 meter long oven. It has three different heating zones, each one hotter than the last. The buildup of temperature bakes the grains into the adhesive. The sandpaper is now rough enough, but not quite ready. In the next step, they roll a coat of resin over the gritty surface, binding the grains to the base. After they cure the resin to the surface, they store jumbo rolls of the sandpaper in the warehouse until they're ready to cut them down to size. They slice some rolls into big sheets. These will be made into commercial sanding belts, the kind used in heavy manufacturing. Another machine punches out sanding discs. And at this station, they unwind four rolls of sandpaper simultaneously into a machine. It carves them, four at a time, into small rectangles. These rectangles won't be used for sanding, but as grip tape for skateboards. Whether you're a skateboarder, a handyman, or both, sandpaper will give you an edge. The real trick is choosing the right grit or series of grits for the job at hand. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a bit of a bad scrape. <laughs>